Okay, so here we go. Let's see what layers we have so far. Building this up. So we have all our background layers. One that we just painted with a gradation tool. Some that we uh, composited in and then gaussian blurred. And then others that we've composited in and gaussian blurred. I might even gaussian blur that a little bit more. And even more. <laughs> And if you want to control it, don't use the last setting. Go right to the tools. Yeah, so something like that looks good. And then we started building up our cloud. So I had my initial kind of sharp edge cookie cutter, and then I, I really cut it up. And even at this cut up, I can see there's some places that are just looking too, too sharp, right? So I can go to 100% opacity, soft edged eraser. Whoops, keeps going to the layer underneath what I want. And I can kind of erase them out, but but layered on top of that is this soft edged one. Layered on top of that, I have that foot. Layered on top of that, I have this back piece. Layered on top of that, I have this head piece and horn. And then I have my little, uh, my big creature, <laughs> right? You can see what I'm trying to suggest. And then my little creature in the corner. Now what seems it all together is this clone stamp layer, which I can keep building with. And it can be used to soften shadows, to merge shapes, to bring highlights together. And in these legs and feet, I need it pretty heavily. So I'm gonna go right to clone stamp. I'm gonna be using a large brush, about 300 pixels, an opacity about 42%. And I'm going to target from all layers where there's quite a bit of texture. And I'm gonna build up a lot of cloud stuff. Sometimes shadowed. It's like lathering up your face with soap before you shave. Right? Now, the reason I can do that is because my edges are soft and controlled. So now I'm going to start shaving. I'm going to take a low opacity eraser, soft edged, and I'm going to start taking away from all that stuff I built up and separating out those clouds again. Not relying so much on everything being connected to one piece. Being willing to erase away from the clone stamp layer and from other layers. And then I can always go back in and clone stamp some more. But only ever on the clone stamp layer, so I have full control. If you clone stamp on a layer that's not separate, Photoshop will of course let you do that, but you'll be replacing pixels as you, as you work, which isn't always the best. I can even clone stamp in with this surrounding sky, right? That makes a big difference pretty quickly. And this is like digital painting. We're just stealing pixels from ourselves now instead of from references. I can try dodging and burning on the clone stamp, but because of the, the lightness of these, that's a little problematic. It will give them more color than I want very often. But a better way is to clone stamp with shadow, right? So if I want more shadow here, like I want to burn it there, I'm going to composite in from something that's already sh shaded by clone stamping it and then erasing away gently from it on that clone stamp layer. So it's just like dodging and burning. Clone stamp also reminds me of, of metal working and welding. And whenever you're working with metals, the most important thing is to clean all of your parts really well before you try to forge them together or weld them together because little uh, impurities really hurt the overall product at the end. So the reason now I can just use clone stamp and just kind of paint my creature 
is because I have the color right, I have the edge right on all these different references, all these layers, even the background layers that I'm sampling from. So I'm pretty safe to just kind of build up and play. And because it's all on its own layer, then just like in welding, I can kind of sand away or clean it up in any way I want. All right, so you can see how much that clone stamp matters. I'm seeing that when I turn it off and on, I lose a little bit of that under shadow. And so instead of trying to compot or clone stamp in more and more shadow, I'm just going to take even a lower opacity eraser and just reveal some of that lighting underneath. And that gives a little bit more weight to the cloud. And now this is starting to look pretty believable. And one last thing, I want to knock this cloud back a little bit. So all I'll do is clone stamp the sky behind on top of it. And that's like a texture fill, you know, just putting more atmosphere there. And then, of course, I overdid it, right? So then I can softly erase. I just want to barely suggest that there's a foot back there. Let's see, what layer is that on? Because that's a little distracting. And just like the cartoon jumble, I can go through my layers and then gently erase away or use smudge tool you know, play with some of these. Push them in different directions. Okay, I'm almost done. I think it's looking pretty good. I'll just do a little bit more erasing from the clone stamp layer. Like I said, we do tend to overdo it. I could always just take the opacity down as well. And maybe I will to about 90%. But because this is a project that is rasterized, it's based on pixels, we have to be very mindful of what it would look like when it's printed. So I want to view it at 100%. And then I just use the space bar to move around with my little hand tool. And I can see those hard edges there. And I want to find out what layer they belong to and then use the smudge tool just to soften them out, push them in and out. So those shapes are still suggested, but so when it comes to a print, it doesn't look artificial. Now we'll talk a lot about this for our final project. This is what's called controlling the finish. Because you can do an amazing job somewhere in your piece, but if there's something that's just glaringly sharp and wrong, looking at that edge right there, it's on this layer, then it's going to bring down the, the overall finish of the object, of the whole print, right? We always fixate on the weakest part. So by viewing it at 100% here, got a little bit of a hard edge on that horn. Often it's one layer that you need to return to and just work with a little bit. So the whole point of this project is to just practice our compositing skills in a new way and to really pay attention to edges at full resolution. I have a little artifact there. Figure out which layer that's on. Actually, it might be in one of my backgrounds. Yeah, it's in this one. So I can even smudge the background. Where is that coming from? from the clone sampler. So quality control, <laughs> it matters. Some artifacts. I can also, 
if smudging is giving me kind of those artifacts, I can switch to the blur tool, which is like Gaussian blur just wherever you click it. And that can help too. I think we need a little bit more clone stamping on this. Soften some of these transitions. Because you can erase away or you can clone stamp on top. You have lots of options. Okay, so I'm viewing at 100%. Going around, you can see some of the artifacts from some of the smudging, but it's looking okay so far. And especially before you print this project, you want to do this kind of close inspection. Because you'll see all of this in the print very clearly. But in the screen, we have to kind of force ourselves to look for it by zooming in to at least 100%. Finishing off our edges. And now I'm back where I began. Okay. I think I can erase that out. So now I have my finished PSD. The only layer I've turned off is the the creature I uh, what's the word? <laughs> the creature I used for my cookie cutter. Now here's just a little fun thing. I can bring my creature all the way to the top and then I can just sink it down through my cloud. Ooh. And it's like that scene in Lion King where Mustafa comes in the dream. But that's the only layer I'm gonna leave turned off. I'm gonna save it as my Photoshop file. So Carl assignment four cloud creature PSD file. Just by hitting command S. You can see that you can turn off different backgrounds and it looks pretty believable just on its own, right? But sometimes having that extra cloud texture in the background just sells it even more, especially if it's big and layered. So I like that in this regard. And now I'm going to save it as a JPEG and that's what we're going to upload online to Photobucket. And you ask yourself, first of all, does it look like a believable cloud? And then second of all, does it suggest my creature? So to the desktop, so when I get to the, the save search, I hit Command D to navigate it to the desktop. And then instead of a Photoshop format, which, which the computer puts a PSD as the tag, remember you never type in your own tag. We move down to JPEG under format and it will change the tag automatically. Hit save and then it will give you the quality slider and we want it to be less than five megabytes. So click preview. And this is even under one megabyte, which is very small, but it's just because all the pixels are so similar, right? Because it's all made out of cloud stuff. So I can even get away at a quality of 12 for this. 1.9 megabytes, as long as it's fewer than five. Now that makes me a little scared that my resolution is wrong. But it's not. It's 9 by 12 by 350. So that's good. We want at least 8 by 10 by 350. So then I can hit F11. And I should see that JPEG appear on the desktop. And that's why we saved to the desktop. There it is, finally. And then I can double check it by opening it up in preview just by double clicking it. And this is how it will come up online when I upload it to Photobucket. And if I zoom in, you'll see that that resolution is there. And that's what we want.
and you only need to upload the one file. But do make